writing a book. I'm in Totnes, uh, which is a really nice place to be. It's really quiet and uh, full of kind of uh, free thinking people and uh, nice places to eat, vegan places, um, spiritual bookshops and stuff like that. It's really cool here. I came here ages ago um, with my family when I was doing a course in Devon um, and uh, just fell in love with how calm it is in, in Devon as a whole. It's so nice here. Um, yeah, so I was contacted by Penguin, Ebri to be precise, uh, back in, I think it was February, and um, they asked me if I would write a book about ASMR, obviously, and uh, I agreed. Um, admittedly, I thought that it would be easier <laughs> than it actually is. Um, I've been here for 10 days now and today is my last day. I really have to go home now and I still have another chapter to do, but it's laid out ready. It's just, um, it's, uh, it's a process, should we say. I've kind of had to um, really, really think about all the things that I believe ASMR to be and, and know ASMR to be and uh, put it all together that it's just six years of experimenting with things and thinking of different theories and meeting people and doing events and reading comments and receiving emails and stories and personal stories from people and it's been just a whirlwind of um, learning and doing things that I haven't actually sat down and gone and thought about, you know, popping it all down on a list um, and collating everything. So it's been really interesting to go through it and to put things into words that I've never really done before and talk about things that I don't really talk about because there's never an opportunity to, like in videos if, um, if I'm making a video, then it's for people to relax to, so I don't always go into depth about some things that I think and stuff I go through um, a little bit in the channel behind the scenes. Um, there's not too much of that in the book, but um, there is a little. It's just me being me, really, and talking about my idea, and my viewpoint of uh, ASMR, explaining what it is uh, and the history of it and how it's triggered and then practical um, ways you can incorporate the kind of techniques into your life, um, which I know and I've never had to put down into words, so it's kind of uh, working all that out. It's been really, really interesting. It's been really hard at times. I've been really hit with anxiety some days and then had to put my own advice into action just because the pressure of writing a book and um, the thought of other people reading it and uh, having a big company like a big publishing house like Penguin waiting for it as well and there are always deadlines with these things, this is how it works. So I have to get all of that stuff out of my head and just sit and write um, and not take too long over it. So yeah, I'm recording the audiobook soon and um, I'm still writing it. So oh my goodness. But overall it's just been really, really uh, therapeutic, shall we say. It's, uh, as I said, it's a journey and um, some days I've had to really, really draw it out of myself and go through a whole range of emotions just to get the words out. And then other days I've just been in the moment and, it, and it, the words just flow. The prep was all done before I arrived, so the layout. Um, I had um, an editor to work with beforehand, thank goodness, because at first when they said write a book, I was like, yeah, no problem, I can do this on my own. And then after meeting everybody in the company and all the marketing people and 
um, all the thing, all the different departments that are involved in it, I started to feel the pressure a little bit, and I thought, oh my gosh, I really need someone on my side. Not that they're not my side, but somebody just for me to go back and forth with about the content and um, the structure of it, because I've never written a book before. So um, Kate, Kate, the editor, and I went through and I told her everything that I'd like to put in there. Um, and we went through what would um, make a, a, a good book to read about ASMR as well. And um, we just came to an idea of a structure and how I can uh, incorporate my ideas in a readable way, shall we say, in a nice order. So all that was laid out beforehand and everything that's going to be in each chapter and so I had all that sorted. Um, it's just been going through it and getting it all out and putting it all into words and oh my goodness. So much harder than, um, than you know, it looks. <laughs> and um, I'm almost there. So I'm really, really proud of myself. Just for giving it a shot really and try my best and see what happens. Um, so I have a couple more hours left here. Um, I'm in a cabin at the end of a really nice lady's garden. Uh, it's lovely and quiet um, and lots of greenery around. Can you, see? you might be able to hear seagulls in the background, loads of birds. Um, the lady who owns the cabin is a painter and she's got paintings everywhere. So it's just nice to be surrounded by art, somewhere quiet. Listen to the birds every day and sit and type and I've been into the town and got food and stuff like that and um, cooked very basic food just to keep me going snacked tea loads of tea and tried to get enough sleep so strange isn't it that um, we live our lives and we can be surrounded by so much beauty and calm and peace and the, the one thing that gets in the way is ourselves and uh, I can think, if I think back now on a few days that I've been here, I've spent most of the days either thinking just really in the book or anxious about it um, and it gets in the way of enjoying the days so and that's kind of everything I've been writing about too. So I've really been living what I'm writing about, um, which I guess is the point really. And you're supposed to, so what I'm trying to say is I've put my heart and soul into it. And hopefully, hopefully that comes across and I've been able to, um, to explain that in words, to articulate myself um, correctly. Or, well, so yeah, I'm gonna finish um, a little bit more work on this chapter now. I'm working on, and um, I've done most of my packing. And I'll say goodbye to the lady who's been sheltering me all week, all the t last ten days, and uh, be on my way back to London. And back to my family, back to my cats and dogs, and and then squeeze in time to finish the last chapter. Because <laughs> as soon as I get back, it's just crazy. You know what family life is like. Most of you, I'm sure you do. Just stuff going on and uh, other other bits of work I have on. You know, filming and things I might have to miss and upload just because there's too much to do. I'll, once I've sent off all my chapters, then I have to um, go over them again um, because the editor then takes them and uh, 
still recording. The editor then takes them and goes through, changes a few things with regards to um, uh, things like, you know, when you're writing, you naturally explain things twice sometimes, and that, so they kind of condense it down. That always happens. And then they go back to somebody, I think it's the type editor they're called, and then they go through and check for uh, mistakes. Um, and grammar and stuff like that. So I'll have to go back and forth a few times and um, and then once that's all finished then we've got the audio book to record and some extra sound files so they're called ASMR minis and I need to record those as well. And then a few extra, I think another three um, recordings I'll be doing in my Tingle Shed as well. So yeah, but it'll be really satisfying when it's done and I'll be so happy that I've been able to uh, have a voice, shall we say. So yeah, I'll carry the camera with me when I'm doing all the other things as well to show you what's been going on behind the scenes. But that's all for me for now, my little cabin in Totnes in Devon. lovely pieces of art. Look at the balcony. Cute. And that was it, it. Was the last one okay? Okay. Incorporating mindfulness into our lives, beginning with the simple concept that we can observe our own mind 
and physical reactions to it is one of the most important things we can learn as human beings. Along with good nutrition, water and exercise, it is the best preventative medicine. We know that stress is the cause of great dis-ease within our body. I remember my nana saying, calm down, you'll make yourself ill. I had no idea of the full extent of what that meant when I was little. I do now. intention and positive affirmation. Intention is the place from where intention is the place from which our actions come. Two people can have the same tools at their disposal, yet the outcomes from the use of those tools can be completely different if their intentions are different. The outcomes can have positive or negative effects for both parties involved. Imagine you are faced with the task of brushing the hair of a loved one and you have two minutes to do it. If you are rushed or annoyed at having to do the task, you may do it with a little extra force, perhaps tugging and causing pain. If you are excited to go and do something else, then you are likely to do it very quickly, missing sections along the way. However, if your intention is for this to be a relaxing experience for your loved one and a mindful or connecting experience for you, then the style of your brushing will be more careful. In each scenario, the same two minutes are filled with different intentions and therefore actions. The latter produces very different and far more positive outcomes for both parties, telling you you are happy. If your brain is then telling you again that you are happy, you smile more. Smile at yourself in the mirror. It has double the whole thing again. Smiling affirmations. It is about being conscious of not taking on responsibility for someone else's journey, learning or healing process. As I have explained, understanding your role as a facilitator means you are able to disconnect yourself from the empathic connection you have with another so that it doesn't continue for an unhealthy length of time and so to be responsible and in control of your empathy. Then we can use it when it is needed and not allow it to take us over. This is part of establishing boundaries with others so that you can aid them in learning. This is part of establishing boundaries with others so that you can aid them in learning and coming to decisions on their own and not be used up to the point where you're exhausted and need help yourself. If we imagine ourselves as batteries that need to be recharged, that can help in terms of using our energy wisely. I'll just read that last line again. If we imagine ourselves as batteries that need to be recharged, that can help in terms of using our energy wisely. Mm. If we imagine ourselves